Jim Elliott was born on October 8, 1927 in Portland, Oregon. Fourteen years have passed. The year is 1941 and America is ripe for evangelism. Yet, Jim Elliott has entered Benson Polytechnic High School away from all the spiritual action and is terrorized daily by Marty, the hallway bully. Hey, Pastor Elliot. Yes! Hey, I saw that Bible of yours. Don't try to hide it. Too bad you're too godly to talk to any girls. Dude, stop it! <laughs> With the power of the Holy Spirit, I can do anything! Hey Jim, I saw what Marty did to you there. Ah, I know, that kid, he was so annoyed. Yeah, that was really mean. Don't worry dude, you got this. I mean, hey, maybe, you know, you're right, you're right. Eight years have now passed since Jim used to be bullied for his unattractiveness. Now, Jim has graduated from Wheaton with high marks in Bible. He has never relented in his dreams of becoming a missionary. But now, he works locally in Oregon, spreading the gospel. But Elliot still hopes that his lifelong goal of becoming a missionary becomes true. Uh, what am I even doing? I'm never going to even be a missionary. <laughs> hey Jim, guess what I just heard? We're going on a mission trip. Really? Yeah, it's true. Me and several other friends have been saving up for a while. And now God is telling me that now is the perfect time to go on a mission trip. And you're practically a biblical scholar anyhow. What? Dude, this is a miracle! Uh, praise God! Whoa, what are we waiting for? Let's do it! In 1952, Jim and his loyal friend Pete, along with several other missionary friends, pack and journey to Ecuador to spread the gospel. After their arrival in Ecuador, Jim and the missionaries decide to stay in Quito, the capital of Ecuador, to study the language and the land. Oh man, is that, is that true? Mm. Oh wow. Man, this stuff is fascinating. Jim, me and the other guys are going to go on a guided tour of the city. Do you want to come with us? Ah, sorry, Pete. I mean, I'm learning my Spanish right now. I guess I'll have to fill you in later. Oh, all right. No problem. Six months have passed, and Jim Elliott and his crew start their expedition through the forest. They travel for weeks to find civilization and finally set up camp. <laughs> Well guys, this is it. After months of training back in Quito, finally made it. Yes, we're here. Finally. Come on, Pete. Let's go explore. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna need these just in case, you know. Yo, what are we doing? No, no, no. Put the guns away. The last thing we want is to be a threat. We don't, want, we don't want to be a threat. We want to preach the word to these Indians. Jim, Elliot, and Pete continue on beyond their campsite to explore the people of the land. That's when they discover something unexpected in the woods. Guys! Guys, I found them! 
I got I saw brick buildings and, and fire pits and they're, they're all there. We can go preach the word to them. We we, we got this, guys. Yeah, but we're gonna need some rendezvous trips first. For the sake of rendezvous, in a small yellow plane, Jim and his crew start to communicate with the Hirani, even initiating trade with the indigenous people. After becoming familiarized with the people, Jim decides to meet them face to face for the first time. All right, guys, today's the day. We're gonna go preach to the Hirani. For his glory! That night, before his encounter with the Hirani, Jim wrote one of the last entries in his journal. Tragically, the next day, Jim and his fellow missionaries, including P. Fleming, were violently murdered by the spear of the Harani warriors for the sake of the gospel. Jim and his men died peacefully, refusing to strike back the very people they had tried to save. Although Jim's mission only lasted three years, building up to the first encounter, it lives on to this day, carried on by the Elliott family and is now a burden shared upon hundreds of missionaries in South America, inspired by Elliott's ruthless sacrifice. Today, much work is still needed and much of God's plan is still being revealed in South America. But a significant portion of the Harani tribe have been brought to Christ through the groundwork laid by Jim Elliott, Ed McCulley, Roger Udirian, Pete Fleming, and their pilot, Nate Saint. Today, Elliot's legacy is taught around the world, teaching of a man of God who gave it all to gain what he cannot lose.